Welcome to A Healthy Curiosity, the podcast that explores what it takes to be well in a busy world with self-care strategies from Chinese medicine. I'm your host, Brody Welch, here to support you on your journey of health, happiness, and personal evolution. Welcome to today's show. I'm your host, Brody Welch, and with me today is Stephanie Dodier. She's a clinical nutritionist, weight loss, and emotional healing expert, author, and speaker, and she is the driving force behind a summit coming up called Going Beyond the Food. She has a comprehensive and integrative approach to nutrition that focuses on finding the roots of cravings and aligning your body and mind. So we're going to be talking about our relationships with food and with weight loss from a, a really different perspective today, rather than focusing on the what of eating and, and rules and dogmas and different dietary approaches. We're going to be diving into the other piece that really needs to be there if you're going to change your relationship with food and nourishment. Stephanie, thanks so much for being willing to join me here on A Healthy Curiosity. I'm delighted to speak with you. I'm so happy to be here and to be with your listener as well. So it's a pleasure. I'd love to know what was the motivating force behind the Going Beyond the Food Summit and your own personal journey. Absolutely. So it's very personal. That's the motivating force. And I think for most of us practitioner in natural health healing arena, we've had some form of personal struggle that led us to discover what society is not teaching us, which is natural health healing. And that was my case. So 36 years old, which is mm, six years ago now, as of today, um, I was in the corporate world at that time, 35 years old, executive vice president, a ton of responsibility, and I was very bad towards my body. Like I didn't eat properly, didn't move, stress, worked too much, had a lot of anxiety, a lot of skin issue, digestive issue, but I kept going because my mean of satisfaction in the world was my work. And my body was clearly sending me symptoms the whole way through of my journey, but I wasn't listening. I wasn't paying attention because that wasn't important to me. What was important is achievement. And the one day at 36, I got up on stage to do a presentation, which I normally did. So it wasn't stressful for the fact of being in front of people, but I literally collapsed before speaking the first word of my presentation. Whoa, that's, that's a pretty big wake up call. Well, that's it. Just so you know what I'm talking about, right? So my body's like, okay, you're not listening, which is going to shut you down. Right. We're so, going to have to yell to get your attention this time. Exactly. So massive panic attack. Never had a panic attack before. They sent me to the hospital thinking I was having a heart attack because at that point I was 300 plus pounds and everybody knew that I wasn't in good health except myself. So send me to the hospital and then six hours later, after checking my heart, they realized and they told me that I had a panic attack and I refused to believe it. Wow. So that's, it. I, I think that I can certainly relate to that desire to achieve and to make your mark on the world and to put your own health needs at the bottom of the list in service of your career. And, uh, and there's so much, yeah, obviously you were, you were being rewarded financially and, and with titles and accolades and, you know, for, for doing what you were doing. So there, there wasn't a whole lot of support for letting the pendulum swing the other way of paying attention to your body and giving it what it was, what it was crying out for. So just, just to presence the fact that that is a really common struggle that I personally experience and that I hear uh, from my patients that is right. That there is, mm -hmm. there are whole society. It rewards the doing, not the being in so many ways. And, 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 you know, if you, I, I study a lot of Zen Buddhism practices and they, they talk about two phases of your life, right? You have the ego phase where you strive to achieve and gather things. And then there's the second phase of your life. I was full on to the first phase of my life. And all I knew that was good to do in this world was to get a lot of money, get a house, get a car, like get all this stuff. And that was your value to the world. Yeah, that that acquiring and, yes. it, and striving. But all along, my body was speaking to me. Like my body was sending me what I call now in my practice, body messages. Yeah. So what were those messages for you? Like if you were able to go back and read the signs. <laughs> what, what were there? So let's just begin by massive back spasm at most random moment. 
like to the point where I would curl on the ball on the floor. And the only position I was good with was in the bathtub of hot water. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it would come in out of nowhere. And I would like suffer for six hours, going to the bath with hot water, calm down, like bring down my nervous system. I didn't know I was doing that, but that's what I was doing. And then yes. the back spasm would go away. Yeah, that sounds pretty debilitating. Yeah. <laughs> I remember one day, and I've never shared that with anyone. I was coming from a business unit visit that I was doing with my um, people that work for me. And I had to stop it short because the back spasm had began, but I didn't want to say to anyone. And I rented a hotel room to be able to go in the bath of hot water because I could not make the drive back home. Wow. That would, that sounds so intense. Yeah. So that, that was one, obviously weight gain was another one. Um, skin issue. I was a smoker too. I didn't declare that I was smoking about half a pack a day and I had a little mold growth all over my face from the smoke of the cigarettes. And that's, that's something that was probably allowing your nervous system to stay jacked up and to basically taking you in the, in the wrong direction as well. Absolutely. So there's that, there's the fact I was at 34 was diagnosed with pre-diabetic. Um, at 35, my doctor wanted to put me on cholesterol medication because of high cholesterol, which I know now is because I was inflamed and yes. my face was all swollen as well. Um, I had left knee pain issue, like severe issue because I was standing, I was wearing heels all day and I was up on my feet eight to 10 hours a day. So there is a lot of ways that you could have been kinder to your body. Oh, <laughs> my like. Lord, yeah. so this is all the symptoms that we call symptoms that I call body messages yes. in my world in which my body was talking to me and it was talking and it was talking and it was talking and I wasn't listening to the point where my body said, literally, okay, you're not listening. We're going to shut you down. And that's what happened to people who get a heart attack or people that are diagnosed with cancer, literally your life stopped because your body is like, okay, we're not going to work anymore. And what is usually called for is a massive lifestyle change in order to change that trajectory in a different direction. And for me, it happened um, after me going in denial, <laughs> having a panic attack, I went back to work. And on Monday morning, instead of being on stage, two out of the four week, I was in a, in a national conference call. So I was about to press the button to start talking and guess what happened? Another panic attack. Oh no. So you were at the point where you, you literally, you weren't even being allowed to do the job that you were striving to do because your body was literally not allowing you. Exactly. You're the yeah. first one who guessed it, right? That's exactly what happened. This episode of A Healthy Curiosity is brought to you by my Basics of Chinese Medicine course. You probably know your Myers-Briggs type and your astrological sign, but do you know your Chinese element? Knowing your element can help you recognize your superpowers, your innate gifts, and how to maximize them. It can also help you avoid becoming a caricature of yourself. But better yet, when you understand your constitution, you can start to get to know which acupoints, meridians, foods, tastes, and activities are going to be medicine for you. And that, my friend, opens up a whole new world of self-care. Basics of Chinese Medicine is an eight-week deep dive into understanding your inner ecosystem. Registration is now open and we start October 18th. You'll learn how to confidently locate and use some of the most powerful acupoints and some essential oils that pair well with them, how to eat with the seasons, how to tell what a food or an herb does by how it tastes, as well as each internal organ's mystical powers, its emotional and psychological functions. To register, visit BrodyWelch.com, that's Brody with an I-E and Welch with a C-H, and grab your spot. So I went to the doctor, my family doctor, and said, like, you got to do something to help me. And he did what he's trained to do, which is to prescribe medication. Sure. Well, and, and really, like, your way of reframing symptoms as a body message is absolutely a, a much more holistic way of looking at it. And there's a value in not just wanting a symptom to go away so that you can get back to your same life that got you there in the first place. Right? It's the ability to read the signs and to see that there's actually a gift in, in what you're experiencing. Not that any of those things are things that we would wish on anyone, but the fact that they're there gives you an opportunity to still be on the planet and living in a different way. And I would presume a much happier and healthier way than... Absolutely. Were. Absolutely. So that moment where I expressed concern to my doctor and he prescribed medication, I had this inner wisdom 
to look beyond medication. I took the prescription, left the office, and I still have this picture of me looking at the prescription and saying like, there has to be another solution. And in part was the fear of me being on medication for the rest of my life at 36. I'm like, if I start now, what is it going to be when I'm 46 or 56? Yeah, it sounds like there's something in you that knew that that wasn't the only answer. Yes, and, and that wisdom is inside each one of us. I listened to that and that, that began my path six years ago into the world of holistic health and understanding that my body was speaking to me and my body has the wisdom to heal itself and to thrive if I only allowed it what it needs and feed it and do what it requires for it to thrive because that's our innate nature. Well, I'd love to know what changes you made at first. Like, did you quit your job? Did you change how you were living in your, in your day-to-day? What, what was your next step or what were the important steps along the way? Absolutely. So I recognized that I was severely addicted to work at that point. So the first step that I did is ask for help. So I hired a health coach, uh, which was also a personal trainer at the time. And we went into the process. My solution, my goal at that point was to lose weight because I, I that point taught that if I lose weight, life would be good. It's a logical conclusion that if you lose weight, you'll have better blood sugar and, and better cholesterol numbers. And yeah, like I could see why you would tackle yeah. that first. And I was trained. So although I was in business, uh, anecdotally, I actually trained in health science. So I kind of knew that there was more. So I, anyway, hired this gentleman, helped me change my diet. We went to a, a paleo diet at the time, real food. And then we started moving gradually and, and exercising. And then the weight dropped very easily. And after a year, the weight had dropped. All my symptoms, not all, but a vast majority of my symptoms were back in line. I was no longer pre-diabetic, no longer needed cholesterol medication, but... I was still not happy. I was still anxious and I was still depressed. Wow. First of all, it's a phenomenal amount of work, but yes, it, just changing your diet wasn't enough to affect your mood and your spirit, it sounds like. I, exactly. Because I wasn't, and what I now know, which I didn't know at the time, but another person came into my life after my health coach, a fascial stretch therapist who uh, had a lot of wisdom with ancient medicine, who taught me the whole mind-body connection like that. It's not just strictly the physicality of healing as far as food and exercise. We also need to work on our mind. And that whole sphere of knowledge came into my life at that point. And that's when I realized that what was driving my addiction to work or my addiction to food was actually this trauma or this emotional weight that I was carrying with me and trying to fulfill through food or through work. That's big. That's a huge ha ha. I call yeah. them those Yoda moment. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So you, you, you had this awareness that food was medicine for this, these deficiencies that you were mm -hmm. experiencing on a psycho-emotional level. That's exactly it. And so I started to discover this whole other side and started working on that. And at the same time, I had quit my job and I had went back to school to do my holistic nutrition. And I was starting to work with patient and I was starting to do what I had done in the beginning, which was to change the diet and, and get them to move. And I was getting great results with people, but it wouldn't stick. Or I would have the other group of people who couldn't even do it for more than a week. They couldn't stick to the habits. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. It's a, it definitely takes time to change a habit and, and it definitely takes support and accountability, but, uh, but it also requires just slapping your hand away from the proverbial cookie jar or the literal cookie jar isn't necessarily as important at, as figuring out what's triggering you to go for it in the first place. Voila. So you asked me how did the concept of going beyond the food came? It came from that place. For me discovering about my own self, because what happened is after a couple of years, I couldn't let go of calorie counting because as soon as I would start, stop controlling my food, I would gain weight. So you, you had found a kind of a stopgap measure. You're like, all right, well, at least I'm not going to be 300 pounds if I count every calorie. And yet, uh -huh. yeah, but at the same time, you hadn't, there was still some more work to do internally. Exactly. Because I hadn't done it because all I did is focus on food and exercise, right? The traditional yeah. weight loss model. Sure. 
so as soon as I remove the control on the food and on over exercising, then my behavior to food would lead with overeating and craving and emotional eating and emotional weight as well, because I hadn't addressed the real root cause. That is really important work that a lot of us need. Is there a first step you can recommend in terms of if somebody's like, all right, I know that I eat for emotional reasons. In fact, I saw, I saw a statistic the other day, might have even been on your site as I was as I was looking at your background yeah. and things like that, that like 40 something percent of people yes. eat for emotional reasons, which is a not small percentage of the population, right? I, I would say the first step is what we're doing today, me and you, which is bringing awareness to it. Yeah. Because the traditional media or educational way in North America, let's restrain ourselves to where we are, sure. do not tell or do not say this message or convey it to anyone. The formula to weight loss is calorie restriction and exercise. So there's a vast number of people listening right now that never heard about this or never was presented with that concept. So the first thing is awareness. Yeah, there is more to it than just food. <laughs> the Basics of Chinese Medicine, Your Inner Ecosystem is an eight week learn from anywhere course that will demystify acupuncture and Chinese medicine. By the end of the course, you'll be able to begin to align your lifestyle and diet with daily and seasonal rhythms so you can digest better, have more energy, and stay healthy, and determine which systems in your body tend to be out of balance and how you might tend to them with lifestyle, diet, acupressure, and more. Each week, you'll get 20 to 30 minutes of an audio lecture so you can listen in your car, at the gym, while you're washing dishes, or wherever. Fun quizlets, reflection questions, and exercises to reinforce the material you're learning. Plus, you'll get three 60-minute group phone calls with Brody so you can ask questions, discuss new concepts with classmates, and learn in a group setting. Go to BrodyWelch.com and click on Basics of Chinese Medicine under the Learn From Home tab to find out more. Classes start October 18th, so reserve your spot today. Two is accepting that, which is a whole other mountain to go over because when you spent, like me, 36 years believing that low fat, calorie counting, and over exercising was the only way to be, you got to retrain your brain to think differently and not to feel guilty yes. when you eat a slab of butter. Right, right, exactly. And in fact, that slab of butter is likely to decrease your sh craving for sugar. Exactly. Instead of the low fat ranch dressing that I put on my salad, mm -hmm. right, put something with higher fat content. So retraining the brain is a, is a big thing. And I would say for me, for me, and this is where the summit comes in, is that there's different way for people to begin their path. For me, the path came through awareness in my movements. So the practice of yoga, qigong, even tai chi, brought me to a place where I reconnected physically with my body because I was completely disconnected from it. I was a head and a body and we were at two different rhythms. Oh, I love that you just brought that up. <laughs> Obviously, as someone who teaches Qigong and, mm -hmm. uh, um, and meditation and yoga, like being embodied, being embodied oh. is, is something that we've almost forgotten how to do in a culture that just encourages us to prop up our heads with our bodies for most of the day coming home to the to the fact that we're not just minds with with baggage right like we're mm -hmm. the, the, the the physical form that we're in there's actually consciousness and awareness and intuition to be mind within our physical state absolutely and i remember the first time i got into a fascial stretch therapy which is a form of um, and i'm sure i don't i know that your listener may not know this but in the fascia that's where we hold our energies right in our body and our emotion. And I got onto a table to do fascial stretch therapy and the it's a very subtle type of massage therapy, mm -hmm. fascial stretch therapy. And she was working on one of my leg and I could not even feel her doing the work. Just that, that disconnect level was really high for you. Yeah, like, so yeah. for my path mm -hmm. was that physical breath movement relationship and staying in position for a long period of time to actually feel every part of your body. 
and then discovering that, wow, when I'm anxious, there's actually sensation in my shoulder. Yeah. And, and we're taught to tune it out. Like people often come in and they, they have the, well, why do I still have the tight neck and shoulders? Acupuncture, I get massage. <laughs> it's great when I leave and then it's back a few days later. And it's the kind of thing where, yeah, what you said about fascia, it is kind of the subconscious where repository for tension. And it's, it's where it, that, as we as we don't move and as as we armor down right that there's we're creating uh, what we would call either sticky fascia or adhesions between muscles we can look at we can label it all sorts of different ways but essentially what you're doing is you're creating a physiology that matches your psychology and a lot of times when you do that kind of inner work it's really important to address uh, that your your body's going to want to show up differently in the world, which mm-hmm. means addressing the fascial system, which can be done with, as as you said, like kind of slow, sustained. Fascia does not respond to speed; it responds mm-hmm. to, and it responds to touch that is slow and sustained, and and also the feeling of safety. So actually, this is like one of those times where in clinic I'll use cupping to free fascia, you know, or like mm-hmm. when somebody really needs to to kind of. Uh, and actually, in Chinese medicine, uh, my teacher talks about the the ancestral sinews, the, the 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 muscles and parts of the body that connect one segment to the other. So oftentimes it's the sternocleidomastoid in the neck or the psoas that connects the uh, the pelvis to the legs or the diaphragm that you know that is connecting our rib cage um, and it, in with our spine. And so just these it's these places uh, of transition that often need to be uh, have some special attention paid to them if we are going to deal with a long held psycho-emotional embodied um, pain pattern. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's exactly it and much beautiful world, word that I can express it. And um, so when I, I started that, like one of the thing, and you probably have the same thing with your patient in your clinic, One once I started to connect, I started crying. Oh, like, yeah. Like she would fascial stretch ter- like with energy healing at the same time. And I would just start bawling and bawling because all that stuff was coming back up. Was well, you, being were released. Too, you were too busy to have an emotion for <laughs> all yes. those years that you were, that you were uh, at the executive level and, and just dr- driving yourself so hard. It's like, yeah, that's, it's kind of frowned upon to be a human being in that environment. Totally. Especially when you're a woman in a world of men. Oh, right. It's like, exactly. If you're emotional, then you're basically a walking stereotype. Exactly. So I was literally like, I I was in a very traditional industry. I was the first woman to ever achieve this level of achievement. And I ran a team of 23 men and one woman. That's intense. Yeah. Yeah. So there was Uh no emotion. So all of that was packed inside of me. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, did you have to actually leave that environment in order to, Mm. to feel different? Absolutely. So I I quit my job and I went back to school because I could, once I was aware, when I began my level of awareness of all of this, I'm like, I cannot heal in that environment. Mm -hmm. And the universe always does things in a perfect wisdom. My company was bought out. So I had the opportunity to carry on or to leave. And I decided to leave. All right. Well, yeah, right. Like there was an opportunity or a natural, a natural exit presented itself Mm -hmm. And you took it to, to come to do this work. Absolutely. Well, and, and yeah, and so now you are that. Now this is what you you show others how they can join you on this path. Exactly. So uh, I've been working with Patient One Hundred One for four years. Um, I went through the clinic model, then I started working online. And the more that I advance into this, the more the realization that everything goes beyond the food is so acutely aware in my world that I want to get this message out to the world. And I know it's an uphill battle because the fitness industry and the weight loss industry doesn't want us to know this because once we know this, we don't buy their product, right? Well, so many industries would be upset if we were all more emotionally whole, right? Like we'd probably probably drink less. We'd probably eat, you Mm -hmm. know, like obviously eat less junk food. There's probably billions of dollars at stake here. Exactly. So it's an underground movement. (laughs) So... (laughs) I have, and what I've realized is that the universe has a line and you can replace the universe by whoever your God of choice is. It's irrelevant to me, but the universe, in my case, gave me a skill set to be able to communicate well, to be able to organize and plan things well. And I have to use that skill set to the, serve the world, which is for me to get that message that healing or weight loss goes beyond the food. And that's how the summit was pulled together to have experts like you and your field of genius 
to be able to share with the world the truth. And that's how the summit is coming together. Well, I am so on board with this message because really helping people get to the root, helping people honor themselves and to realize that that even that that first of all it's like it's hard right it's hard to to do the emotional work that it, that mm-hmm. is required to to break up with food as a crutch or as a drug and that and to use it for nourishment and it's been a struggle in my life as well like i'll often i've i've talked about it many times on the podcast how I often use food to slow down. I, I use yeah. food to ground myself. And even though I'm at a healthy body weight at the moment, it still doesn't feel good to realize that I've like, it, you know, like that I'm, I'm doing harm to my body by stuffing myself. If what I really need is time, rest, companionship, somebody to, to talk to, you know, like, and that, mm-hmm. that, that work is still something that like, I don't necessarily, I can't speak from a place of like, I've completely healed this because, uh, <laughs> Because it happens, and and I work with forgiving myself and letting myself off the hook because I'm a human being with needs, and that and there's a whole lot of conditioning that that I'm working to overcome as well. But just that that message that that this is work worth doing, and to be on like I know you've gathered an amazing group of experts, and I'm really honored to be part mm-hmm. of that. It's it's going to be um, exactly what your own experience is. Is it's not about perfection. It's not about the holy of getting there because there's really no there. It's a journey. It's the human experience of traveling through awareness of our relationship to food, our relationship to our health and getting the wisdom of different people because my path was one way with movement and breath. That's when the journey began and with Buddhism, but for other people, it may be, psychotherapy it may be hypnotism it may be um, like there's so many ways for us to become more aware and find what our body is desiring and learning to listen to our body and that's what i want a platform that can present 25 different ways of looking at this to help you and one of them i know one is going to resonate with you it may be brody's talk it may be dr cole's talk about got help, but there's something that's going to resonate with the the viewers that's going to engage them in that next step of going beyond the food. Awesome. Awesome. So I'll make sure that there are links. If you're interested in, um, in the summit, there will be links to that in the show notes at brodywelch.com forward slash podcast. And you can go to this episode um, with Stephanie Dodier and download um, or click the link and get yourself signed up for for the summit, which is free if you listen live, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Since November 1st to the 8th is the viewing time. And every day you have access to three to four teacher. I call them teacher, the speakers, teacher. But for me, they're teaching a concept to the viewers. Um, there's going to be bonus attached to that. And also at the end, you'll be able to purchase the whole thing if that's what you wish to do. And uh, it's about compassion, right? It's about finding that place that is going to allow us to become what we want to become, whatever your goals is. Well, Stephanie, it's just an awesome thing that you're doing. And I really appreciate uh, you, that you reached out and are allowing me to join you on that journey because uh, it's it's such a it's such an important thing. And I would love for for everyone who is is currently feeling bad about themselves in their relationship with food to be able to drop that and move beyond it and feel what's truly nourishing about life right now. Yep. Empowered. Yes, exactly. Thanks so much for joining me today. You're very welcome. And I look forward to talking to you on the conference. Likewise. Thanks for listening today. For more episodes of A Healthy Curiosity, you can visit the iTunes store. If you appreciated today's show, please leave us a review. This helps other people to find the podcast. You can also head to brodywelch.com where you can find free self-care resources, learn more about Chinese medicine, and let me know what you'd like to hear about on future episodes. I'd love to hear from you. Till next time, be good to yourself.